Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back. I was thinking the other day that uh, people might be interested in the new Space Force. And uh, maybe I can do a video to just give some basic information about what a space operations officer does. So I'm not by no means an expert in the career field. I retired last year as a major in the Air Force. So uh, if I would have stayed in the Air Force, I would now have been in the Space Force, but I retired. So I did not, I did not make the transition into the, uh, the other branch of service. So I think that space is a great career field to get into and the Space Force is a great option for people who uh, like technical applications of things, who are really into um, the future, what's going on, the cutting edge type of technology. So to start off with, what kind of training do you go to? Well, you'll obviously go through your commissioning source, whether that's ROTC, OTS, or, or what have you, and then you'll graduate, go into the Space Force, and you will attend it's kind of a base, basic space training. So you used to go to what's called Space 100 when you got your commission as a second lieutenant and went off. The first thing you did as a space officer was to go to Space 100, which is your basic space training. It teaches you things like orbital mechanics. It gives you an intro into the different space constellations and space programs we have. Now that's been revamped a bit for the U.S. Space Force. Now that that's a new uh, branch, but that's still what you're going to get. You're going to get kind of intro into space. They used to have Space 100 when you first came in, Space 200 as about when you're about a captain, and then Space 300 when you're a major. So now it's called Undergraduate Space Training, and uh, it's going to be very similar to Space 100. And that's going to be happening in Vandenberg Space Force Base. It used to be Air Force Base, now it's Space Force Base. There's lots of different areas you can work in as a space operations officer. For example, I'll give you a few examples of those. The first thing that comes to mind that you hear about on the news all the time is space lift, where you're launching, you're part of a team that launches a satellite into space, into orbit. So um, the space lift officers are going to typically be at either Vandenberg Space Force Base or they're gonna be at Patrick Space Force Base. The two uh, bases that do most of our launches, they're on the coast, because we like to launch over a uh, body of water so that we don't, uh, we don't have the chance of some of our rocket body parts landing on a civilian population. So we do it over the uh, ocean. So this might not be as exciting as it sounds initially because what you're gonna be doing as a space lift officer is pretty much working with contractors, working with other government workers to ensure that a launch stays on track, stays, stays on schedule. Now I never did this, this job, I've just talked to people who have. So it's a lot of program or project management type stuff making sure deadlines are met, making sure uh, things happen. And then when it comes time for launch day, then that's the exciting part where the, the rocket will launch and uh, hopefully whatever you were working on gets put into orbit successfully. So that's one kind of job that you can do as a space operations officer. The other side of that is what we would call the range, a range officer. So I just mentioned how we launch our spacecraft, gets launched on, on the coast. So either Vandenberg Space Force, Vandenberg or Patrick, Florida or California. So it gets launched over the ocean. So we need to make sure that there's not fishermen out there or people sailing or boating in the in the area that the the rocket is going to be launching so that it doesn't things don't fall and hurt somebody. We last thing we want is to hurt somebody. So there's a range squadron to make sure the range is clear before the launch. Now I'm sure they do a lot more things than that, but again, this wasn't a job that I did, but I, that's their primary mission uh, on the range is to make sure that the range is safe for launch. All right, so moving on to other kind of opportunities you might have in space is the typical, I would call space command and control. So as a space command and control type of a job, you're gonna be on a crew. So you're gonna be in a room with no windows, very top secret, highly uh, sensitive area, and you're going to be you're going to be managing a constellation of satellites. So you're going to have folks there on the operations floor that are going to make sure that the satellite is in the correct orbit, that it doesn't possibly run into any other spacecraft or space debris that's out there, um, and that it stays healthy. Send commands to it, make sure that the spacecraft is healthy, and react to anything out of the ordinary. You're, you would be, as a space operations officer, you'd be in charge of that whole operation for that shift. You wouldn't necessarily be an expert on anything in particular. You would know a bit about everything. So you'd be like, you know, they say a mile wide and an inch deep. So you know a lot about 
a little bit about everything, but not a lot about one thing, if that makes any sense. But you know who to go to if something goes wrong, you know who to go to and who can fix it, and you organize the operation in that respect. And on the operations floor, there's usually a two, two folks that are in charge, the crew commander and the deputy crew commander. So when you first start off from the job, you would be the deputy crew commander. After some experience, you would upgrade to the crew commander position. And this, this type of job can look different for any kind of different constellation there is. So the Space Force is in charge of making sure GPS is up and running all the time. So you have GPS that you get in your phone, your cars, your watches, whatever you have GPS in. Space Force is making sure that those satellites are healthy and in the sky and doing what they're supposed to do. There's also other missions that you could do as well. There's communication satellites. I worked specifically with missile warning. So I did missile warning satellites, which is called um, SIBRS, S-B-I-R-S. When I worked at uh, Buckley Air Force Base doing SIBRS, there was a, it's changed now because it's gotten bigger, but there was a, I was, there was a crew commander and a deputy crew commander that was in charge of a, P, a a group of people on the floor that was about 20 people. So maybe like uh, 10 of those people were your actual Air Force suited people. And then another 10 of those or so were, were government contractors or civilians. And they're all helping you to make sure that the satellites are safe and healthy and doing the mission they're supposed to do. Anyway, it was a pretty cool job. I really liked doing it. I did that for a few years and I transitioned to another job at Buckley Air Force Base. Um, before I was done there. So it was a lot of fun and uh, I really enjoyed it. So another place where you might get stationed as a space operations officer is this is the SPOC. They call it the SPOC. It used to be called the JSPOC. Now it's just called the SPOC. So this is a space operations center. S-P-O-C, SPOC, Space Operations Center. This is at Vandenberg, which is in California. It's in, and if you're wondering where Vandenberg is, it's just north of Santa Barbara. It's, it's a really beautiful country out there. I definitely recommend anyone uh, getting there if they get a chance. It's a really beautiful country. It's really beautiful out there. And Vandenberg Air Force Base itself has about 99,000 acres. And a lot of that is untouched beach, which if you're stationed there, you can go down to that beach and it's, um, it's kind of cool to be down there walking along the beach and stuff. All right, but as I was mentioning, the Space Operations Center is there and there are all sorts of offices in this, in this, um, in this operation center. I took a tour of it when I went through Space 100, but I had never worked there. But there are lots of cool offices that uh, handle different aspects of space operations. For example, there is an office there that tracks all the objects that we have in space, including not only the satellites, but the junk that we have in space. And there are thousands and thousands and thousands of them, not to get into a specific number, but there are thousands of, of, of pieces of debris orbiting the Earth at any given time. So one other aspect of the military that people are always curious about is deployments. So the Space Force is new, but in the Air Force, if you were a space operations officer, you didn't really deploy that much. I deployed myself two times. One time was for an entire year, but that wasn't doing my space job. In the past, if you would deploy in the Air Force, you'd deploy to a job other than your space job. But now since the Space Force is its own thing, you're probably only gonna deploy if you're doing the actual space operations job. And there are very few positions as a space operations officer that do deploy. As far as other locations that we have space operations in, Patrick Space Force Base in Florida, which is a beautiful area. You have Vandenberg Space Force Base, which I mentioned just north of uh, Santa Barbara, California, also beautiful. And then there's Colorado where you have Schriever Space Force Base and Buckley Space Force Base. Buckley's in the Denver area and Schriever Space Force Base is just east of Colorado Springs. So all great locations. Other opportunities are in Eglin Air Force Base, which is in Florida. There are also uh, opportunities in Huntsville, Alabama, because there's a lot of space stuff going on there. There's a couple positions in Cape Cod, Massachusetts. Very, those are very few. The vast majority of the time you're going to be doing space operations, you're going to be in California, Colorado, or Florida. So not bad. So I know all those locations sound great, but there are some non, not as desirable areas, I guess. Each person is different, so you might like a place that other, other people don't like. But uh, we do have some radars, and radars are a lot of the time going to be north. So you have Cavalier. And there's also radar stations in Alaska and Clear, Clear Alaska. So if you like the north, that would, might be a good opportunity. Usually those aren't as long of an assignment as normal. 
normally you're going to be at a base for about three years but uh, Cavalier I think is about 15 months same goes for Thule Greenland Thule Greenland also has a radar station and that's about 15 months of an assignment as well but overall really great locations Nothing really terrible about the, the bases you can get in the, in the Space Force as a space operations officer. If you're thinking you might actually want to work hands-on, work on a satellite, then you're not really going to see that as a space operations officer. We're dealing more with operations. So you're dealing with, with commanding a crew more like. You're more in a leadership position, leadership management, that sort of thing. If you want to actually work on a satellite, your, your better option would be to get a degree in engineering and get a job maybe in one of the many contractors that make these satellites. Or you can become a engineer in the Space Force, but uh, there's no guarantee exactly what you're going to be working on, so no guarantee there. But you could get, have the chance of actually working on some of this stuff or at least fixing some problems with the satellites as they arise as an engineer. So that's another option. But if you're really into engineering, you might not want to be a space operations officer. You might want to go the engineering route instead. Okay, well, that pretty much sums up all my information on the Space Force and uh, Space Operations Officer career field in general. I hope I have provided some pretty interesting information and uh, you can use that to make your decision on what you want to do. Maybe you want to go in the Air Force, maybe you want to go in the Space Force, maybe you don't want to do either. I wish you good luck and I'll see you next time.